I've got the joy down in my heart. I've got the joy down in my heart. I've got the joy down in my heart. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yeah. Got the J-O-Y deep inside I try to keep it in but I can't hide The love that you have given me I just want the world to see that You're the only one who makes me smile I don't worry cause I'm your child Every day I look to you You give me joy that's breaking through I've got the joy down in my heart I've got the joy down in my heart I've got the joy down in my heart And the joy of the Lord is my strength, yeah Inside. I try to keep it in, but I can't hide The love that you have given me I just want the world to see that You're the only one who makes me smile I don't worry, cause I'm your child Every day I look to you You give me joy that's breaking through I've got the joy down in my heart I've got the joy down in my heart, I've got the joy Down in my heart, and the joy of the Lord is my strength, yeah I've got the joy 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 I've got the J O Y deep inside I try to keep it in but I can't hide the love that you have given me I just want the world to see that You're the only one who makes me smile I don't worry cause I'm your child Every day I look to you You give me joy that's breaking through I've got the joy down in my heart I've got the joy down in my heart I've got the joy down in my heart And the joy of the Lord is my strength I've got the joy down in my heart. I've got the joy down in my heart. I've got the joy down in my heart. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yeah. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yeah. Hey, Spring Streeters, welcome. We are gonna continue our lessons today on forgiveness. So let's pray and then we'll get straight into the what you gotta know video. Dear God, thank you so much for being here with us today. Uh, thank you for forgiving us and for sending your son to die on the cross so that you know our sins could be forgiven and we can go be with you in heaven. Uh, we love you very much, in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, now let's check in with our friend Wiggy Pop in the What You Gotta Know video. What you gotta know, what you gotta know, what you gotta know, what you gotta know. What you gotta know. My name is Wiggy, Wiggy Pop, and I'm here to have a rockin' time telling you what you gotta know. Today, we are answering the question, 
why should I forgive? So every time today that you hear someone ask you what you gotta know, you tell them this. God forgave me, so I forgive you. That's right. God forgave me of all my sins. I am forgiven. Now I have a reason for living. It's so awesome to know that God has forgiven us. But if he has, then we got to be willing to forgive other people. You know what I mean? So every time today that you hear someone ask you what you got to know, you tell them this. God forgave me, so I forgive you. And that right there is what you got to know. My name is Wiggy Pop, and I'll see you next time. Rock on! <laughs> All right, Spring Streeters, welcome back. That Wiggy Pop, whew, that guy's crazy. Um, today's lesson comes from Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 through 35. So that's the book of the Bible, Matthew in the New Testament, chapter 18, which is the big number, and then 21 through 35, which are the small numbers you'll find through the paragraphs. Now, we... This whole story is a story told by Jesus called a parable. And a parable, although it's a made-up story, it it has a lesson to it. it, it it's a way that Jesus w could tell people kind of how to live their lives in a way that they could remember it. And this particular parable is about a king. And, you know, this king had loaned out a bunch of money to his friends and servants and all kinds of people. And, you know, it was time to start collecting that money back. So he started bringing in all the people that owed him money and asking for the money back. So uh, one particular servant, he had loaned a lot of money to. Like in today's kind of money, it was millions and millions of dollars. So the king said, hey, bring that servant to me. So the servant came into the king's court and knelt down in front of the king. And the king said, servant, you have a large debt that you owe me. You must pay it or else. I mean, now this servant got a little desperate because he didn't have the money. And so he said, oh, king, please be patient with me and I'll pay it. The king felt sorry for the servant and said, I have decided to forgive you your debt. You no longer owe me any money. So the king saw that he didn't have any money and he didn't really have a way to pay it back. So the king was very forgiving and he said, hey, you know what? Just consider it paid back. You don't owe me anything. I mean, this servant was like overjoyed, over the moon. He was so excited. I mean, he probably danced out of that place. So as he was, you know, leaving the king's court, he saw another servant. Now, this servant owed a few bucks to the other servant, the, the servant who had just had millions of dollars uh, just forgiven. Now, the servant who had the millions of dollars forgiven went up to the other servant and said, hey, you owe me a few bucks. I need my money. And so the second servant was like, I'm sorry, I don't have your money right now. I, give me some time, I'll pay it back. Do you think that the um, servant that the king had forgiven all his money was nice about it? Oh, no. He said, give me my money. Pay me back what you owe me. And the second servant began to beg Oh, please, sir, give me more time. I'll pay you back. Have mercy on me. But the first servant demanded that the second servant be thrown into prison until he was able to pay debt. Because back in those days, if you owed someone money and they couldn't pay, you had to serve time in prison. And that's exactly what happened. The second servant went to prison. Now, the king heard about this. And he had heard that the servant that he had forgiven millions of dollars for had put another guy in jail because he couldn't pay him a few bucks. And the king was just mad. He called the first servant back in front of him and, and he said, hey, you wicked servant, I forgave you of that huge sum. Shouldn't you have given forgiven the other man? I now command that you be thrown in prison and you until you pay back every penny of the money that you owe me. And that's exactly what happened. So in our lesson today, we're going to learn about what Jesus was trying to teach us through this story, this parable. You're going to learn that you, you need to forgive others as Jesus has forgiven us for our sins. And if you don't, you run the risk of not being forgiven by God. Now, I need you to listen closely today. This could be one of the most important lessons that you learn about when you're following God. So to kind of 
start this thing off, I have a little skit with two of my little friends. So, we are gonna get this party started. So, I'm gonna turn the camera around. I'm gonna introduce you. This is Sally the Princess, and this is Pablo the Pony. Now, Sally the Princess and Pablo the Pony are hanging out. All of a sudden, Sally sits down, and she's like, ooh, ow, oh, 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 ow. And Pablo the Pony's like, hey, Sally, what are you doing? Well, I just sat down on a bumblebee. Well, why don't you just get up? Well, because I figure I'm hurting him more than he's hurting me. You know that sounds crazy, right? So, she's like, ooh, ooh, ow, ow, ow. And then she finally gets up and ah, she runs off. Now, that seems a bit crazy, right? I mean, you sit on a bee, you'd want to get off of it. But, um... We kind of do the same thing sometimes. Sometimes if we, if someone hurts us, we choose not to forgive them because we think that we may get revenge on them or make them feel a little pain for hurting us. Uh, I'm here to tell you, big picture, not, it doesn't work that way. So, I mean, really the truth is that little um, princess here, she's the one that was really hurting the most. It really didn't hurt the other person. What she needed to do was to get up off the bee and just walk away. You know, sometimes, like I said before, we do the same thing. We try to hold a grudge against someone because you think they'll maybe feel kind of the hurt that we were hurting. But again, just doesn't work that way. In fact, choosing not to forgive others hurts me more than it hurts them. And you might say, no, it doesn't. I don't feel bad at all about not forgiving them. In fact, they're the ones that hurt me. So how in the world does it hurt me more than it hurts them? So uh, let me explain. Like, you have this apple. Now, apples are delicious. You have apple juice, apple pie. Eating them straight up is delicious. Apple sauce is amazing. You know, they're sweet. They're delicious. They're good. Now, what happens to that sweet taste if I squirt mustard all over it? Is it going to taste like that same apple again? No. It's going to taste sour and bitter. Sour and bitter. That's what kind of happens with our hearts. God made us to have, to be good, to be wholesome, to be nice and loving and forgiving. But when we choose not to forgive someone, that puts a little sourness and a little bitterness in our heart. And it doesn't take very much. Just a little bit will change like the flavor of an apple or change the way your heart is. Um, we can just become more bitter and more angry and more bad feelings that'll just keep eating away at our hearts if we don't forgive others. In fact, Hebrews 12, 15, which you can find in your Bible again, says... Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. I, what that means is when you are filled with bitterness, it affects you and it affects everyone around you. And that's not even the biggest reason that it can hurt, that not forgiving someone can hurt you. The biggest reason is that when I choose not to forgive others, God will not forgive me. Now, you might be thinking, Josh, you can't say that. God always forgives. But uh, that's not me saying that. That was Jesus that said it. In fact, in Matthew 18, verse 35, the where we found our parable in the Bible, um, Jesus goes on to say about the unforgiving servant and said, that's what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. Wow. Wow. If we choose not to forgive those that hurt us, God refuses to forgive us. Now, you're going to ask why. Why would God be so harsh on that? And here's the reason. The whole reason Jesus came down to earth and died on the cross was so that all people could be forgiven. When 
we choose not to forgive someone, that saying that what Jesus did for us isn't important. And it's not a big deal what Jesus did for us, when obviously we know it's a huge deal. I mean, forgiveness is important. And it's a command from God to us that says, forgive those who have hurt you just as I have forgiven you. So, I mean, Jesus comes right out and says, listen, I came down to earth so that you could be forgiven. And God wants us to so that we can live by Jesus' example. So what should we do? If someone hurts us, it obviously hurts. You can't deny that. It doesn't feel good when someone hurts you, betrays you, tells lies about you, um, spreads rumors about you. It's not fun, and it's not an easy thing to forgive. What we tend to do is we tend to do what the king initially did and locked that person up in prison. We lock that forgiveness up in our heart and won't let it go. Um, what we need to do is really make the choice. Make the choice to forgive someone. And for all the reasons we just said, because God tells us to, because it only hurts us if we don't. We need to forgive them. And here's how you can do it. Here, here's, here's how you can make this really, really happen. Because forgiveness is a choice. I must choose to set them free. Here's, here's how you do it. You go and you can talk to them face to face. You can tell them, hey, here's how you hurt me. And I'm forgiving you for that. You can write them a note. You can send them a text message. You can Facebook messenger them. You know, you can even pray to God and forgive them and, you know, and tell God that you forgive them. Um, now, when you choose to forgive that person, you release them from that prison of unforgiveness in your heart. You take the mustard out of the apple of your heart. <clears throat> and not only does that forgive the other person, but the nice part is that after you forgive them, you feel free as well because forgiveness is a wonderful thing. Um, so let's say a prayer to close and then we'll go see the actor talk about our power verse of the day. Dear God, thank you so much again for your son forgiving us and dying on the cross so that we could be forgiven. Uh, please let us use that example in our lives so that we can free ourselves and forgive others. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, thank you. Oh, please hold the applause. <laughs> thank you. Well, I am the actor, and I'm here to teach you today's power verse. And if you want to be a great method actor like myself, you must know the power verse. So let's get to it. Today's power verse says, remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Colossians 3.13b. What a stupendous power verse. But if there's anything I've ever learned, it's that you'll never forget your lines or the power verse in this instance, if you say it completely in character. So to help us, let's select today's character from the character box. Ah, yes, today's character is a cow who is playing chess with a dinosaur. Hmm. Acting, thank you. Ha <laughs> no, today's character is actually a person who has suffered a cold. Someone with a stuffy nose. <laughs> so take your fingers and do like this. And then I want all the boys and girls to stand up and say today's power verse with me on the count of three. One, two, three. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Colossians 3.13b Acting, thank you! Wow, that was superb! Well, I must get going, so I'll see you later, boys and girls. Exit, stage left! Has anyone seen stage left? I believe I went the wrong way. I don't know where it is. <laughs>